Amen. All right, Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many, all right, however many that is, that are led by the Spirit of God, that's how many that are the sons of God. Okay? So here's a qualifying factor here. Amen. To be a son of God, amen, you have to be a son that is led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The word Abba there is the word Father. So we cry, Father, Father. Praise God. Amen. Double announcement of deity. Father, Father. Praise God. Once in the heavens and once in the earth. You can declare that the Father is, that's in heaven is also your Father on earth. Hallelujah. I said, your father that's in heaven is also your father on earth. Amen. If you are led by the spirit of God, then you are a son of God. The word son there is not gender oriented. Okay. It specifies, it's talking about the order of spiritual relationship. The same order between God and Christ was a relationship of father and son. So when the scripture speaks about sons in this um, manner and approach to scripture, it's not excluding females, okay? Because in Christ, there's neither male nor female, all right? There's neither Jew or Greek, okay? There's neither the bond or free. All of us are free in Christ. All of us are sons in Christ. Praise God. We're sons of God. And so we don't have to get into this battle that we see in society, primarily in America, where everybody wants to identify themselves as to how they feel they want to be identified. So we got this war going on, uh, because why? Because everybody want to be equal to everybody else, and you all know my personal belief and my personal approach to life is that it was never intended for us to be equal. I'll deal with that a little bit later. That's part of our issue, is trying to be equal. God didn't make us equal, praise God, but he made all of us in his likeness and in his image. I can't go ahead of myself here because I feel like sometime I lose some people that I really don't want to lose, so I am going to try with whatever time I have to see if I can help you understand something mighty and powerful concerning your walk in Christ and your relationship with him. It says here, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself, notice capital S, the spirit, all right? What spirit? The spirit of God, all right? Itself beareth witness with our spirit, small s. So the Holy Spirit bears in my spirit, all right, that I'm a child of God. Listen, you can say whatever you want to say about me. You can treat me however you want to treat me. But the Holy Spirit says in my spirit and bears witness with my spirit that I'm God's child. Now, I would not spend any effort and time and energy trying to convince you of that, praise God, because the only way that you can know that I am so is that you yourself is so also. But see, you can't recognize what I am if you are not the same 
And if you don't know that he has the ability to make me who he says I am in him, then I don't have to spend time trying to convince you who I am in Christ. Why? Because the Holy Ghost already confirmed that I am. It's not about how I feel. It's not about how I look. It's not about what I have and don't have. It's not about who I know and don't know. It's about whether or not the Holy Spirit has bear witness in my spirit that I'm a son of God. I was at a place of business with someone, and I got out the car walking up to the building, and a gentleman I'd never seen before, he just said, Hey, sir, are you a minister? I said, Yes. Y'all know I try not to look like one. So later on, I got a chance to ask him. I said, what made you ask me that? I said, you ever, you know, been to, uh, you know, a service at a church or what have you? He said, no, sir. He said, I've never seen you before in my life. He said, when you stepped out the car, it just, something just kind of jarred me and said, you know, this man is a minister of God. I said, well, I need to bring you to my church then, let you. All right, let's go on here. Verse 17 says, and if children, notice if there, but if is never on the part of God. If is always on the part of man. So when the scripture says, and if is not because God, amen, doesn't deem it so or does not want it to be so, it is that is man's choice whether he wants to be or not. So if is always on the part of man, there's never an if when it comes to God. If is always used as it refers to man. Why? Because man has a choice. Man can decide whether or not he wants to or not. Hello. And if children, then heirs. You can't be a child of God and not be an heir of God. What are you saying here? God has a rich inheritance for you. And that is not when you walk through the golden gates of heaven, which y'all know I'm being sarcastic. I hope you pick up on that. But God has that for you while you're here on earth. He wants you to have your inheritance that he determined for you to have while you're here on earth. Praise God. You can live in your inheritance in God right now if you and if. Everybody say, if I want to. Okay, that's if you want to. So I assume you don't want to because I don't see, okay. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, where will you suffer with him? You will suffer with him while you're here on this earth. So if I suffer with him while I'm here, then I can also reign with him while I'm here. If I can suffer with him now, then I can be glorified with him now. Mm -mm, no. I wish that I could have just invited the college level students to church today and told the kindergartners and the elementary kids and the middle school kids and the high school kids, you all can stay home today because the lesson is going to be the college students. And it wouldn't benefit you to come if you're in elementary school and middle school and, and kindergarten. It wouldn't benefit you to come. Y'all don't like that, do you? No, no, no. See, because church is not a hospital. Church is a school. See, this is the place you're supposed to be learning and graduating, learning and graduating, learning and graduating. You're supposed to be becoming more and more spiritually mature, more and more spiritually mature. You're supposed to be growing up, growing up. Guess what? There ought to be some things you're able to walk through without anybody's help and assistance. 
There ought to be some stuff that you know how to deal with that you don't have to go and run and ask somebody to help you with it. Why? Because if you are growing up in him, you know opposition is a way of life now. Mm. Verse 18, he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What you are going through now, while you're here on earth, all the stuff you've gone through, all of the agony, the pain, the frustration, the disappointments, all that you have gone through, if you are a child of God, you're going to be able to say while you're here on earth that the suffering, my present suffering, my suffering in this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that he reveals in me. If I go through this, if I suffer through this, there's a reigning, there's a glorification that I'm going to experience, experience while I'm here, I'm here on earth. I'm going to be able to magnify him and glorify him through what I've been through. The praise is not mine, but the praise is his. I want somebody to know that God is powerful. I want somebody to know that he's awesome. I want somebody to know that he can do, amen, the impossible in my life. I want somebody to know that. But if I don't go through nothing, if I don't have to deal with anything, how they're going to know that God is powerful enough to deliver me? from every situation the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous it says many there's no need of you dragging this same old cliche everybody has a, every time i turn around it's something that's what you signed up for baby when you decided that you're gonna serve the lord and you told him if he saved you, that you'll do whatever he wants you to do. You'll go where he wants you to go. You, you promise him that. If you can just get me out of what I'm in, if you can deliver me from the misery of my life and put some joy in me, God, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. So stop whining. Stop complaining. Give him praise in everything you think. But this is the will of God concerning you. And just make up in your mind that whatever he allows you to go through, he's got the power to keep you in the midst of it. I haven't given you a subject yet. I'm talking about another dimension of power and authority. Oh, I know you need it, baby. I know you need it. I said, baby, I know you need it. I know you need it. Praise God. You're worn out. You're weary. You're tired. You can barely make it. Amen. You got to pray just to get a mind to come to church. You know something wrong. Because you promised, you told them this is where you want to be. But when the time comes, you got to struggle, you got to struggle. See, because there's some power and authority that you need to walk in and live in on a daily basis. And you can't pick this up on Saturday night and think you're going to be equipped Sunday morning. You got to have this with you every day of the week. You got to talk the talk every day. You got to walk the walk every day. You got to declare it every day. You can't have this just missing and matching and all of this no you got to make up your mind every day I'm going to serve him every day of my life man that's when some power come to your, your side to your aid for, for the earnest 19 said for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation there it is again of the sons of God what are you saying here for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God all creation everything created see Listen, everything created, every animal, every tree, the ocean itself, everything in the ocean, everything in the air, everything on land, guess what's happening? They're groaning and they're travailing. What's making, amen, this reaction take place? Why? Because all of creation is waiting 
for the manifestation of the sons of God, just waiting for us to become who God says that we are in him. This is why, amen, all of nature is wreaking havoc. This is why we're seeing patterns in the weather and patterns in other things, amen, that we've never seen before. And man keep talking about what's going on, global warming and, and this and that, and, and all of the temperatures are getting more. I saw yesterday where they're going to probably start hurricane season a month before the time they usually started. Why? Because of all this unusual usual weather patterns we're seeing but that's just all the creation groaning that's just creation moaning that's creation just waiting for us to be who God says that we are why because they make creation know that when we get delivered creation is going to get delivered all the creatures of the earth is going to get delivered when we get delivered when we get delivered out of all of this questioning whether or not we are or not and whether I am or not or whether I'm good enough or not or whether I'm perfect or not God didn't base his excellence and his grace and mercy on your life based on how good you are he based it on how good he is because if he waited for us to become good enough we would never ever get there verse 20 says for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly see it wasn't it wasn't the will of the creature to have to endure this and experience this. The scripture says not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Praise God. Why? Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Oh, all the creatures... The saying, when you all get delivered, we're going to get delivered. This is why we're moaning. This is why we're agonizing. This is why we're travailing. This is why we're groaning. Why? Because we're waiting on the manifestation of the children of God. We're waiting on the children of God to manifest the glory of God in the earth. Oh, it's already taking place in heaven. Amen. But for the Bible says his word is forever settled in heaven. God is trying to get that same word settled in the earth. He's trying to get it settled in you and me where you don't wake up every day and question and have the doubt and the concern whether or not you are who he says you are. I told you that's your biggest battle. I need to say this. And the person is here. And I want to put this in a way that I believe that they will be okay with me saying this. I was asked to talk to someone that I had never talked to before, had never seen before. I, I don't think they had ever heard me. They heard of me, but had never heard me preach or teach or anything. It's just that somebody they trusted referred them to talk to me. And so when they asked me would I speak to this person, I said, yes, I got on the phone. And now the person who did the connecting between us had told me some history about the person so that I would have a place to start from in my conversation with them. And so when they told me all what the person was dealing with and how things was going in their life, when I got on the phone with the person, I never asked them one thing about what they were going through. All of what was shared with me, told me what they were going through, I never asked them about it. You know why? Because, see, God can fix your problem through fixing you. Yeah. See, Satan used your problems as a distraction to keep you from getting to God, who is the solution. So every time you look, there's a problem. Every time you look, there's an issue. He wants to preoccupy your mind and your time and your energy of just uh, assessing and analyzing all of your problems. Because Satan knows that if you ever get to a word from God, that word will empower you and that word would give you authority to address your own problem. So 
So listen. Ever seen the person? I get on the phone, and the first thing I start talking to them, to them about, because listen, I know this works for everybody, Minister Melton. This works for everybody that comes to me and got a list of issues or things or matters in their life. It works for everybody. I use, it, I use the same approach for everybody. Why not? Everybody got the same problems. Huh? You know, before we got into this real modern day and high time of, of, of development and medicines and what have you, see, there was only a, a handful of medicines that they treated you for almost anything. Penicillin, everybody got penicillin. If you got an infection, you getting penicillin. If you didn't get penicillin, you got amoxicillin, or you got some kind of cillin. But I want to tell you something, tell you this. I don't care what your problem is. This right here fixes everything. <laughs> hey. You know what I did? I talked to this person only about who they were in Christ. That's all I talked to them about. I didn't say, well, you know, what about this? If you got a health problem, if you got a marriage problem, if you got a family problem, if you've got a child problem, a children problem. We didn't go into any of that. All I told them was who they were in Christ. About 30, 45 minutes. All I was letting that person know was that let me tell you who God says that you are in him. Why? Because I know all of these issues, all of this stuff is about Satan wanting you to doubt who you are and cause you to always be asking the question, who am I? See, if I don't know who I am, I don't know what I can do. And if I don't know what I can do, I don't know what I can have. But if I ever know who I am in him... I don't care who it is. I don't care how much education they have. I don't care how much notoriety they have. If I know who I am, you know what the psalmist said? The psalmist says that he'll bring me before kings and governors. The psalmist said this. He said that he'll make me wiser than my teachers. Yes, when you know who you are, honey, you can stand on your own two feet. And you can declare to anybody, I know I'm somebody. I may not have the education you have. I may not have the plaque on the wall. I may not have the degrees, but I know who I am, and I'm satisfied in him. Listen. This is what you got to know. I'm sorry that the church primarily has become a cookie cutter. You know what that means? A cookie cutter? You know, if you got a cookie cutter and you got dough, every one of those cookies is going to look the same because you use the same cookie cutter. So you turn out all the cookies, all the cookies look the same way, what have you. That's what the church primarily have done with saints. We're trying to make everybody feel alike, look alike, act alike. And I'm here to tell you that is a bad illusion that the church has come under because now if we're supposed to be alike, if we're supposed to be the same, and then there's something I notice about you that's a little better than that is about me, the instantly I'm going to have jealousy because I think that we're supposed to be the same. But if I know, listen, if I know that, guess what? God has given all of us grace. He has given all of us talents. We all have an assignment. 
We all have a calling, but it's not all the same. We're not going to have all have the same authority. We're not going to all have the same power. We're not going to have the same duties and the same responsibilities. But whatever it is I have, he gave it to me. And if he gave it to me, that's enough. I ought to be satisfied with what he gave me. And if I'm satisfied with what he gave me, I don't have to be jealous of what he gave you. Because what he gives you, he gives you that in, it, uh, in, in being consistent with what your assignment is in him. So it doesn't take the same amount of whatever for me to do what he called me to do. All it takes is the amount that he gave me. I, I used to, I, I told this pastor and I told him for, for a while and I... I, I quit. I quit saying it. You know, after a while, you just know, you just get tired of saying the same thing to some people, and you just let them go on. on. Because guess what? That's what they want to do anyway. So why should I take this breath that I might need one day and waste it on somebody who don't want to listen anyway? But I told him this. He used to always say, you know what, I believe God, I'm going to pass to this many people, and I'm going to pass to this many people, and pass to this many people, and what have you. I said, if God called you to pastor, did he put an addendum on that to tell you how many that'll be? And I asked him this. I said, and if he gave you the number that you're claiming that you're going to have, I said, what if 500 of them showed up Sunday? out of the thousands that you say you're going to pass. I say, what if 500 of them showed up on the doorsteps of the church Sunday? I say, what would you do with 500 people that just showed up? He said, uh, well, uh, man, I don't know. I said, well, then why are you asking for something you can't handle? I said, what you ought to ask God is to give you the amount of people to oversee and pastor according to the measure of the grace that he has given you. Because if you get outside of grace, you're on your own. So we don't all have the same gifts. See, you, you, you leaning toward the world. All men are created equal. That ain't so. The Bible don't say that. The preamble of the Constitution says it, and that's why we got all these fights right here in America now, because everybody trying to be equal. I don't want to be equal to nobody. All I want to be is treated fairly. I don't want to be equal. You know why? Because if I claim equality with you, I'm limiting what God wants to do in me. He may want to exceed in me what he did not exceed in somebody else. I want him to do it to the max in my life. Whatever that is. And if that looks like it's less than what somebody else has, I'm still content. Now, y'all ain't gonna like this. I got to finish this. Not gonna like this. That's why I really don't need all your attention. I don't need all your attention. I don't need y'all to be coming and gloating over me and putting me on a billboard beside the highway and trying to make people think I'm somebody. See, a lot of that is a struggle because you don't know that you're somebody. So you figure, you figure you're going to do like corporate America does. If I advertise me, then I might become what I was being advertised. That's not how you become you. You become you through the knowledge of knowing who God is in you and who you are in him. Y'all ain't gonna like me now. Anytime the time come to honor my wife and I as far as the anniversary or what have you, you all don't know how much toning down that we do. Because, no, I, you're not going to bring some high wires in here and, have us floating across the sanctuary and got the deacons catching us and then putting us down. I, listen, I don't need that because 
I know who I am. Hello? Listen, this man right here, Elder McKinney, he's not 100% right now because he had knee replacement. He can tell you how long I struggled with them carrying my bag. Because I'm not trying to look important to you. I already know how important I am. Hello? I don't need 10, I don't need 10 uh, 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 people walking me in church. And armor bears every time I turn around that I can't do nothing because I'm bumping into an armor bear. I don't want to live like that. Get out of my way. I, when I used to travel a lot, I would drive myself to where I'm going, and I would have people all the time say, Pastor, you want me to go with you to drive? And I say, thank you so much. I appreciate that thought, but I want to be by myself. Why? I want to just drive and ride. I don't want to have to counsel. Are you hearing me, huh? You know what? And when, Because sometimes when I'm traveling, I just want to be quiet and just take in the sights. And I don't want nobody just the whole way. And I'm saying, I can't wait to get them up out of here. You moody. No, I'm not moody. Let me tell you that. Almost, I don't care what's going on. Almost every time you see me, I'm the same. But what I don't like, I don't like all that attention. Because to me, it's an identity glitch sometimes. We have security people around here because we've had some crazy people come up in here and got out of order. So we got sense enough to have some security around here. Hello? And I don't want them to be in security and they're not secure. I need them to be secure. If they're going to offer security in this house, I need men who know how to throw down if they have to. I told you, Deacon Amos said, somebody told him, said, uh, uh, you know what, Pastor Wright talked like he'll fight. Deacon Amos told him, said, yeah, his deacons will too. That's what I'm talking about. See, we got enough runners. <laughs> we got enough runners. We need some fighters. Hmm? I can't wait till, till I can get back to preaching for an hour. I can't wait. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. You know who you are in Christ. You can have relationship with people that you thought you could never have. Some people don't want relationship with other people because they feel like that person is outdoing them. A lot of people that I, I don't, I don't be around these people as much as I used to. A lot of people that I would be around, people who got education, doctorate degrees, and degrees in this and that. I don't have a degree, but I got a temperature. And you know what? That don't intimidate me. Because what I found out was that I was so satisfied with just knowing who I am in God. That makes, that makes all the difference. Listen to me, you all. That makes all the difference in your life to know who I am in Christ. To know who he is in me. I walked in their mansions and complimented them. And this is beautiful. Awesome. This is great. No jealousy. 
no competition. Why? Because I got what he wants me to have. And if he wanted me to have that, I would have that. God. Father, thank you. Bless you. We honor you in this place today. Glorify your name. You're worthy. Worthy right now. There is not a tick second hand on a clock that you're not worthy. There's not a time that we can open our mouths and utter a praise that you're not deserving of. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, strengthen our Redeemer. Help us now. Strengthen us now. Give you glory. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us stand.